Globally, tuberculosis is a massive public health emergency. 1.5 million people die every year of TB and 8 million people are ill. But it's not just a worldwide problem, it is a problem in Ireland. We've got about 380 cases, but we've got a larger amount of multiple drug resistant cases to look after as well. The big difficulty with TB is it takes a long time to treat. We're running out of antibiotics because of the multiple drug resistant issue. And this, of course, presents an opportunity to do research to try and improve vaccines and therapies, which essentially opens up an opportunity for us to design better vaccines and post-directed therapies. One of the nice aspects of this discovery is that it also enables us to pick out which patients will potentially respond to interferon gamma treatment. And that's been the big breakthrough, I think, of this research. How people respond to TB varies a lot. As an example, my grandparents all grew up in inner city Dublin in the tenements and in those days people would have been packed into a room, maybe 10 people in a room, and there was a lot of TB around. Everybody in the room would be exposed to the same cloud of TB in the room. But how people respond to it differs a lot. So some people would have got sick and got sicker and sicker. There wouldn't have been any antibiotics for TB at that time and they would eventually end up dead. Some people would get sick and eventually recover. And then a lot of people in the room would never show any signs of illness at all. And we really didn't understand why that was. So it's very intriguing. Most diseases aren't like that. TB is kind of different. So then what we did was Luke O'Neill, who's one of the supervisors on the project, a little over 10 years ago, he had discovered a protein called MAL. And the reason that MAL is interesting is about 25% of people in Ireland and in the rest of Europe have a different form of MAL. So what we found was that having this different form of MAL affected how intensely you respond to interferon gamma. So if you have one form, you have a big strong response. And if you have another form, you have a much dampened down response. And we think that we know that interferon gamma is really important in TB. So we think that this is why this particular protein, having a different form of it, does in fact affect how likely you are to get sick with TB. In a broad context, um, interferon gamma, as Kleena introduced, is one of the key weapons the immune system uses to defend itself. And it's particularly important for what are called intracellular pathogens. So bacteria, for example, like tuberculosis that lives inside macrophages, one of the main ways the immune system uses to defend itself against these organisms is uh, interferon gamma activating macrophages to kill the bacteria. So our discovery suggests that it, while it's important in tuberculosis, that any condition where interferon gamma is important in activating macrophages to kill bacteria, this pathway could potentially be important. And even beyond infectious diseases, it's known that interferon gamma uh, can be protective in, in cancer. So again, it could be that our capacity to defend ourselves against tumours in cases where interferon gamma is crucial, that the genotype in terms of what form of mal you have may be decisive in how you respond. So I think in a number of conditions, including uh, treatment of pathogens and treatment of cancer, potentially the mal genotype should be something we study. So one key thing that facilitated this research being done really was the fact that much of it was based in the Trinity Biomedical Sciences Institute. It was funding from the Health Research Board, Science Foundation Ireland and the Bagot Street Trust that allowed us to kind of pursue this line of research, which is I think evidence that um, bringing basic research and, and clinical research closer together and funding fundamental research to get at these basic mechanisms can be very worthwhile. Thank you.